needed to invite me to dinner that evening when we met. He saw that I'm already too fat, so he said, this guy needs to lose some weight. So that was the, right? That was the, when you didn't invite me for dinner that evening, yeah. you saw that I'm already too fat. So you said, this guy doesn't need any more food, Be right? Be <laughs> I appreciate the thought. So thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. It's, uh, it's uh, wonderful to be here with you. Um, uh, I think you have taken time from your busy schedules to come and attend this meeting. So I would like to uh, tell you something. I would like to make this an interactive session. I don't want just myself to talk. If you have any question at any point in time, please put your hand up. Uh, by the way, Ken is so nice. He said, if someone asks a question, we can give them a bottle of water. Without asking a question, we cannot get a bottle of water. <laughs> what if we bring the water? <laughs> bring the water, then you have to ask two questions. Because no, no outside food or uh, beverages are allowed in here. <laughs> it's, like some, it's like some restaurants, right? You cannot go to a restaurant bringing your own bottle of wine. So, okay. so then you have to ask two questions. So I would, like to, I would like to structure this entire talk in, in about three uh, segments. First, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, maybe a little bit in addition to what Ken uh, mentioned. And then uh, I would like to kind of analyze a little bit about uh, where does China sit right now in the economic global uh, condition. And then third, I would like to talk about maybe some of my recommendations about what the China, um, uh, especially the Chinese exporting community can do in order to enhance and improve their businesses. Yeah, so those would be the three, the three uh, specific um, uh, segments. And then we can, we can, we can have a, just an open discussion at the end. And maybe at the end I can also tell you a little bit about uh, the company that I, I have developed, which is globalbox.world. It's actually quite ironic because we are now in the Alibaba.com room and globalbox.world is actually meant to become a feasible competitor for Alibaba. So we can, we, we can see exactly. But thank you, uh, Jack Ma, for providing this space. You are a uh, <laughs> very nice guy. And hopefully we meet one day and we can shake hands. All right, so a little bit about, about myself. I, uh, Ken said uh, that uh, I was born in Romania, true. Uh, I was born so many years ago that I cannot even remember how many. <laughs> it's been too long. Uh, but I'm, I consider myself truly to be a citizen of the world. I've, I've visited more than 50 countries, actually 53 countries. And it's interesting because this year I'm 53 years old. See, so I do remember exactly. Uh, and I have visited 53 countries so far. And I want to make it to 100. I still have about 10 years to go. Hopefully, we can, we can make that. <laughs> yeah, so one, at least one country for every year. That, uh, so um, I've traveled quite extensively. In China, I traveled in many, many cities. Uh, can, can you bring that uh, No, the, uh, the word file, if you don't mind? The word, the word, yeah, that one. So can you scroll down a little bit? OK, so in China, you will see that I'm, I'm very good friends with the Chinese uh, people, not with the Chinese uh, army. You know, they, they know me by now. Everybody in the Chinese army knows me. I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> this is at the Great Wall of China, and I had a wonderful opportunity to, to have a photo with, uh, with some of the Chinese soldiers. That's me in Tianjin. This is more than, this is about, uh, 2007, 2006, 2007, so quite a number of years ago. Uh, I used to be younger back then, now I'm old. Uh, so in China, I have to tell you, I visited many, many cities. I just put a, a bunch, but I visited quite a few cities, and I, I truly love China. It's, it's, it's amazing for me to see, because I'm coming to China for the last 20 years pretty much, almost every year, and it's amazing to see the transformation. It's amazing to see the growth. You see, because you live here, you don't really perceive that transformation as, as it happens. But for someone that comes maybe once every year or once every two years, you, you see the improvement. And it, it is truly, truly an amazing experience what China has, has transformed into. And uh, I can see, you know, I, I know Shanghai ever since Pudong was just about nothing. And today, today Pudong is the most flourishing city, you know, a part of the world. 
uh, what they built there over the last 20 years is unprecedented. So it's, it's wonderful for me to experience that thing, and it's wonderful to be in China with you. Um, I've taught some, can you do me a favor, just scroll down a little bit. I cannot scroll. So I've done, I had some, some uh, interesting um, academic engagements at Fudan University. You probably know of Fudan University. Everybody Who doesn't? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking, of course you do know. Uh, also at uh, Wuhan University, and I've, I've uh, taught in uh, many universities around the world, in Canada, in Switzerland, in the United States, in Europe, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's briefly my, on my uh, academic experience. For last, uh, about five years ago, uh, I've seen a lot of the uh, e-commerce companies emerging, and uh, I had a thought about creating a universal platform, something that is similar with Alibaba, but much more complex. And I would dare to say that Global Box is, is far superior to Alibaba. Of course, we don't have this, the sort of money that Alibaba has, but we, we are building something uh, quite wonderful. So let's talk a little bit about um, this. Can you just scroll down a little bit, just so we can see uh, up, up, up. That's it, that's it, that's it. So let's talk a little bit about where we are today. I think you all know that over the last 20 years, China has grown significantly. And in a sense, I think it's important to recognize the fact that China has grown primarily because of the hard work, but also because of one tremendous partner that China had. And that partner was the United States. A lot of the, a lot of the manufacturing capacity that was built in China was actually built to satisfy the needs of the world because China has become the de facto factory of the world, right? Most of the manufacturing is done in China. And no matter which country you go today, on the face of the planet, you will see things made in China. So that's a wonderful thing. But at the same time, as China is growing, you see this, this, uh, this global economy is kind of like a pie, like a pizza pie. And you can grow the pie, and you can have you know, a, a, a larger share of that, that, that pie. But at the same time, some countries are going to be winning and some countries are going to be losing. On the, on the, uh, as a sum, this is a bit of a zero-sum game. It's a, as we grow the pie, it's still a bit of a zero-sum game. In other words, some countries are going to lose and some countries will win. Luckily for China, China was on the winning streak. Um, it, it, it has been, and, and China has, has grown and has developed quite, quite uh, extensively over the last 20 years. In the process, the United States also benefited because they bought relatively inexpensive products from China, and many, many people in the United States would always go to stores like Walmart, you may have heard of Walmart, you know, and buy relatively inexpensive products made in China. So that was a win-win situation. In China, it has created a lot of uh, uh, jobs. In the United States, the consumerism, because in the United States, it's all about buying more and more and more. So the consumerism was kept alive because of this thing. But as things evolve, the United States has realized that, that this cannot continue on forever. Why? Because China has accumulated a massive, massive amount of uh, financial resources, right? And this is good for the country because the country can now uh, leverage those financial resources and it can actually uh, employ them into building more and more stuff. But for the United States, that's not that good. Why? Because now the United States on, on a whole, the economy and the industry has de-skilled. They've lost, while China has industrialized, Right, and build more and more capacity, the United States has lost a lot of capacity. Mm -hmm. And now they, 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 are, they are getting in at, a, at a point where a very large majority of the people that used to work in the manufacturing sector, they don't have a job. So when you don't have a job, you have no income and no way to purchase goods. And then no matter how, how inexpensive the products that come from China are, even those products, you cannot afford them anymore. And it's interesting because about 30 or 40 years ago, uh, how many of you are familiar with a city named Detroit? Detroit. In Detroit, 
Uh, Detroit is the, the yeah is the is the city where they used to manufacture all the five yeah the five large car manufacturers Ford and GM and Chrysler. All these guys are in Detroit. But very interesting. If if you were to see Detroit today, you would not. Can we share? Can we share like a two minute thing? Can you go to YouTube? I know that you can go to YouTube. We shouldn't tell them how you go to YouTube, but. <laughs> listen, listen. Ken, Ken, Ken can do. Ken can work marvels. You, most of you know Ken, and I can tell you he can work marvels. Whenever, whenever he puts his mind, he says his mind to something, he's going to work marvels. I just want to share with you a brief two-minute video of Detroit today. Thirty or forty years ago, Detroit was the the envy of the world. Everyone and anyone in the world. Can you go to YouTube? Okay. Can you type in at the top just streets of Detroit? Streets of Detroit. Streets of Detroit. So 30 or 40 years ago, everybody wanted to go to Detroit. It was like, like the Shanghai or the, you know, the, 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 one of the, the, the best cities in the world. And I'm going to show you in two minutes. Just the second one, please. Second one. This one? Yes. Put it on. You don't. The, 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 we are just going to watch one minute because one minute is, is more than enough. Skip the skip the. So the the sound the sound doesn't even matter. Just put it put it on. Just go from the beginning. Just watch this, watch this, and I'm going to explain what this thing is all about, right? So watch this. This is the city of Detroit today. Today. So I don't think, I don't think the, the video needs any comments. I think it's, uh, it's important to, to, to see and to realize the effect, the effect of what we call the globalization phenomenon.